Hey everyone, it's Jack here, Talk Neuro City. I hope you're all doing very well indeed. Uh, back again for another video. Uh, it was lovely to have an upbeat atmosphere against Reading um, last time out. Hopefully that continues against Watford on Monday. I'm going to try and remain upbeat in this video. We've got a couple of really exciting things to talk about. The first of which being um, our pot on Betmate for Monday's game. Um, it's a guaranteed 100 pay payout. It incorporates all of the championship games kicking off at 3pm. I actually picked up fourth spot in our last pot. I hope a few of you guys run into the money as well. If you haven't already, you can sign up to Betmate using the link in the description. It's a brilliant um, fancy football type game where you pick seven players in different um, scenarios. Uh, points mean prizes. Um, you can get yourself a £10 free bet down in the description below, simply click the link and enter TNC10 when prompted. I'll see you over there. We've got a front runner for the next Norwich City managerial position, and he comes in the shape of David Wagner. Yes, um, we are all familiar with him um, from his time at Huddersfield, of course. He was under Stuart Webber then, um, masterminded what was a fantastic promotion from the championship. I remember watching that Huddersfield side at Cow Road um, and just being genuinely really impressed with what I saw from them. And of course, they went on to um, to do some really nice things under David Wagner. His, his, his success rate since then hasn't been great. He's been sacked twice. But it's a very interesting development, this one, and, and probably not the most... Um, outrageous of um, of, of picks and, and, and a fairly predictable one, um, considering the fact that, that him and Stuart have worked together before, very much of the similar mould to Daniel Farker, came through the ranks at Dortmund, worked under Jurgen Klopp, implemented a lot of those kind of Jurgen Klopp um, tactics in terms of high press um, at, at Huddersfield and has tried to do that at his job since. Uh, I watched a brilliant video kind of talking about his tactical revolution at Huddersfield on, on um, TIFO football earlier. This is a very complex manager who um, loves overlapping wing backs. I think we've got real talent in, in that wing back position, whether it's Sam McCallum and Max Aarons or Max Aarons and Dimi Anulis, like there's talent in those areas. Lots of goals scored from through balls and low crosses. I feel like we've got players that can deliver low crosses in Aarons and McCallum with those overlapping full backs. Timmy Pukki, that's what he thrives off through balls. Like that's what Huddersfield um, were were known for in that 16-17 promotion campaign. Um, would love to be seeing some of that um, at Norwich City. Um, and more importantly, probably for Norwich, currently without a club. And that is probably the key thing here. The fact that Norwich won't have to pay compensation for their man. And I think we've made that very clear, haven't we, from early on, that it would be very unlikely that Norwich go for a manager that's currently contracted to a football club. So David Wagner is the front runner. Uh, Michael Bailey tweeted to say that there's a short list of four. He didn't make clear who the other three were and expects there to be some form of news next week. So possibly even in charge for Norwich City's um, game after Watford against Blackburn um, in the in the FA Cup. So an interesting development. I'd love to see what you think about that. There were small improvements against Reading for Norwich. Um, as I kind of talked about in the last video, I thought the, the passing was more crisp, was more energetic. Uh, I thought we got Timu in some, some really nice positions. I liked um, that kind of front three with Adam Eder. And we come up against the Watford side here, who are in just woeful form. Um, they've failed to score in five of their last seven championship games. They were without Chowdhury, João Pedro, uh, Imran Luza and Tom Cleverley in their 4-0 defeat to Swansea last time out. The game before that, they lost 2-0 to Millwall. They did have a 2-0 win against Huddersfield, but then the two games prior to that were both 0-0 draws against Bristol City and Hull. So Watford not going at all well. Um, that 4-0 defeat to Swansea was certainly unexpected. Um, and, and maybe you always see, don't you, after heavy defeats, the the team on the on the receiving end of a thrashing kind of sits back deep. And I don't think Norwich City would mind that too much because I think they'll feel confident under Alan Russell that they could they could break Watford down. They are still above us in the division. Uh, they're on 37 points in seventh. We're on 36 points in ninth. Win this game and we could go all the way up to fourth depending on other results. So I, I still think at this stage it's probably irrelevant to be looking 
at the league table, although I did when I was trying to justify Dean Smith's um, position for a little while um, at the football club. It's it's going to be um, it's going to be fascinating these next few weeks. I think this is a, this feels like a, a fairly important game in terms of how we rate our chances to to sneak into the top six this season. I think hopefully then you get a manager in ahead of that Blackburn game in the FA Cup, and you can get a little bit wild with that one, throw some you know curveballs in there. I don't think anyone's probably too fussed about an FA Cup run at the football club. That's very low down the priority list, I suspect, at this stage. Um, But the the signs against Reading were that there were very small improvements. Alan Russell's had, what, maybe a a day, a day and a half on the training ground. It certainly won't be much. There would have been a day of recovery in there and possibly a day of training um, today. But he's not had too much time to get those players um, playing in, I guess, a style that he wants it certainly seemed a little bit more direct um, in that last game against Reading. And I think he, he he made that clear, didn't he? That he didn't want us kind of so pedestrian on the ball, passing it through the, the from defender to defender. Um, and, and that was pleasing. Whether that works again against Watford will be, will be fascinating. But positive signs, I think. Um, that's all I'm saying. I'd love to hear your thoughts on David Wagner. Is this the lazy decision? Would you like to see us go for someone else? Or do you think it's an inspired move from Stuart Webber? Going back with a former man that he knows that he's had success with. Um, I'd love to hear what you think. Thanks very much for watching. And I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye.